You know them, you love them. Cheaty is back on the channel for the third time with their new Plus 4 3D printer. They sent this over for review, so a big thanks to them. This video comes off the heels of my previous video where I showed that the chamber heater could potentially get overpowered, leading to damage to the electronic components in the back of the printer. I went out and bought one of these kilowatts so that way I could show the power that the printer is drawing. And you'll see that here in just a second. But Chidi also sent out an email saying that they're going to take care of this issue, which seems very proactive. And they went ahead and sent me a new solid state relay circuit. I haven't installed this yet. I do plan to. But if you're looking for any kind of comprehensive testing of this, I don't have a way to do it. So I can't really help you there. When I plug it into the kilowatt and just let the printer idle, you can see that it draws around 30-ish watts. If I turn on the chamber heater and set it to 60 and let it run as high as it will go, you can see that it draws max about 180 something watts, which means that the heater is drawing around 150 watts. Now this is well under the 400 watt rated maximum for the chamber heater, so it seems like they might have overcorrected a little bit, but the chamber still hits the temperature that you set, so it seems to be working. Now if you've ever watched one of my reviews before, you know that I like to put these printers to their paces and see how they actually print, rather than listing off a bunch of features and doing an unboxing video. So hopefully by the end of this, you will see how this printer actually performs. With that being said, let me go ahead and rattle off a couple little features for you. Something Chidi always seems to do is make a very sturdy Z-axis, and this printer is no exception. We get dual independent Z-motors with a 10 millimeter lead screw and four 10 millimeter linear rods. This time around, we also get a six millimeter thick aluminum build plate that does tell you to preheat because it will need some time to soak through. Moving up to the gantry, the biggest, baddest new feature of this printer are the 9mm, 1.5mm tooth spacing belts, which should help to reduce any kind of artifacts in the print. More on that later. If you're familiar with an X1, this will be very similar. Core XY, poop shoot, filament cutter, filament with sensor, 1080p camera, chamber heater, insulation on the inside, glass, an actual door handle, thank you, dual gear extruder, aux fan, chamber fan, and other typical printer things. Now this does run Clipper firmware, which is something that I greatly value in a printer, and I think is what sets something like this apart from, say, a Bamboo Lab printer. They do seem to have a multi-material unit in the works. I don't have one, and hopefully they do send me one. All right, enough of that. You wanna know how this bad boy prints. So I did some prints in PLA and ABS, both Polymaker, which is my favorite filament brand and I highly recommend them. Nothing exotic, but I think these prints will show you how the printer performs. Starting off, I printed one of these Articulating Dragon. Now for reasons I don't understand, people love these things. They sell the shit out of them, but it does have a lot of small features, sharp corners and overhangs. So I figured this was a good first print for, well, does this thing even work? Right out of the box, I ran Input Shaper on the screen loaded up Chidi Studio, loaded up the default profile, and just hit print. Also, come on, Chidi Studio, can come up with a better name. I think for right out of the box default settings, you can hardly expect more from an off the shelf 3D printer. The Z offset was automatic, the first layer looked great. It finished the print and it looks pretty good. Although if we zoom in here, we can see that some of the sharp corners aren't that great and the overhangs could use a little bit of work, but this is a default profile and it really only goes up from here, I hope. I then kind of wanted to torture test the Z offset in the first layer. So I ran these dummy 13 plated parts, which it seems like the V1 of the dummy 13 is a bit easier to print over the beta files because I struggled with those a lot. But I ran the armor parts in PLA on both the plus four and the X1 so that way we could see what it looks like. Interestingly, the plus four did have one failure with one piece, but I ran it again and they all stuck, probably just a fluke. The X1 had everything stick as well. Zooming in on the plus four parts, you can start to see the same trends with the articulating dragon and the stock profile. The corners and the overhangs aren't great, but I'll show you some improvements here in a sec. I ran the frame parts in ABS on both the X1 and plus four, and for the plus four, I set the chamber to 60 Celsius, and for the X1, I let it preheat for about 30 minutes, where the chamber reached about 40 Celsius. Both of the plates printed with no failures and no warping, which these are small pieces, so I wouldn't expect too much warping, but 
It's good to see it nonetheless, or good to not see it. And here are the assembled models from each printer. The Bamboo Lab is gonna be on the left, and the Plus 4 is gonna be on the right. I then wanted to see if I could improve some of these deficiencies, so I went into the printer config, and I changed the square corner velocity and instantaneous velocity down to five from eight or 10, I believe. I then slowed the accelerations down to under what input shaper had, which was 4,700 max. So anything in the slicer that was over 4,600, I put under 4,600, or I set to 4,600. Then I picked some slow speeds under 100 millimeters a second, and I enabled arc pitting in the printer config. And here we can see what that does, and the corners and overhangs look much better. I then wanted to print a more difficult overhang test. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you would have seen this rock wall face print, and it's a very good demonstration of how the printer handles overhangs. I did this in PLA on both of the printers because PLA takes the most cooling. I would give a slight edge in overhang performance to the plus four here, especially for this section right here. You can see too just how smooth and good the surface looks, and this was run with the bone stock profile. This print, it's kind of hard for it to have perfect overhangs. Some of this is actually just printing in mid air, so no printer can ever do it perfect. And I think the plus four did a very good job here. All right, I hear you saying, well, this all sounds great. I'll buy one right now. What's the big deal? What's the catch? Well, all of these prints look pretty good, but if we go to this section of the rock wall face right here, we start to see where the issues crop up. Vertical fine artifacts or VFAs. Now, long story short, I never could fix this issue. I communicated with Chidi to see what they would say, and in our short exchange of profiles back and forth, the problem never really got fixed. I tried a ton of test prints with different speeds, accelerations, wall width, and nothing ever really made a difference. I tried doing the belt tensioning procedure. I ran this cauliflower skew correcting print and fixed the skew and clipper. That didn't have any effect. And this really freaking sucks because this is a great printer marred with a problem that's very tricky to solve. And if you look pretty close, you can see that the VFAs are very finely spaced together, about 1.5 millimeters, which if you remember, is the tooth spacing on the belts. And so these new belts that are supposed to be better might actually be causing the problem. The thing is though, the X1 has VFAs too. And if you peruse Reddit or Maker World or printables and you look at these pictures of people's prints, there's VFAs everywhere. Everybody's printers has VFAs and nobody seems to notice or care. So maybe this isn't too big of a problem, but I notice it and I care. It's also very easy to hide VFAs depending on how the lighting is set up when you take a picture or a video. So I can show you that here and I'm purposefully trying not to hide it from you guys. I printed this Gengar figure as well on the plus four and one of my Vorons, which has no VFAs at all. And you can see here on the side of the mouth, there's some VFAs in the plus four and you don't see anything like that in the Voron print. I'm interested to hear what you guys think of this issue. If you've dealt with it on your printer, if I'm a friggin' idiot and you know the solution and it's so easy and I can just do it in five minutes, leave it down in the comments. I wanted to do some more ABS prints, so I printed some Voron parts for an upgrade that's going to be in a video, so watch out for that soon. And I printed some on the X1 as well. I think these look pretty good. You can still see some of the VFAs, but the overall layer stacking is good. And I would say that these look better than what is printed on the X1. Both stock profiles with tweaks to the number of walls, the amount of infill, and the wall width per the Voron guidelines. I wanted to do some bigger prints in ABS to test for warping. And while this didn't warp, it had some things in Z where it was periodically producing some weird horizontal artifacts. I printed it again and they seem to go away, although the VFAs are very obvious in this print. I've shown before how the chamber heater it very much helps with warping on ABS, ASA, and other technical materials, and it still holds true. Now, out of all the test prints that I did to try to fix the VFAs, all the PLA prints, all the ABS prints, there was one thing that was very consistent through all of it, and it's that the prints all printed. They were all fine. The first layer was great. I didn't have to touch the Z offset once. In fact, I didn't really have to do anything. I changed some profiles, but every print that I sent to this printer just worked. And that's something I really look for in an off-the-shelf printer. It should just work. The camera is pretty high quality, especially for being a small, tiny little thing tucked up in the corner. The lighting inside is very good, better than the X1. I think the stock profiles leave a little bit to be desired, but pretty much every printer's stock profiles do. I find using Chidi Studio pretty much the exact same thing as Orca Slicer, because it is Orca Slicer. And you can use Orca Slicer if you want. The functionality is already built in, and I know that's a very popular slicer these days. I actually switched over to Super Slicer for some of these prints because that's what I prefer to slice in. 
and after changing some of the variables in the G code section of the printer, it just worked flawlessly. And now the burning question, do I recommend this thing? I would watch some other reviews and see if the VFAs are present and what they show, because this could be an issue with my machine in particular. I really want to recommend this printer. It is much higher quality and an easier experience than the other Chidi printers that I have tried. If it wasn't for those dang old VFAs, I would highly recommend this printer. So I really hope that this isn't a widespread issue. If we look back at this rock wall print, the layer stacking and the quality of this section is amazing. And it was printed with the same ease that you would expect out of something like a Bamboo Lab, but with added functionality of having Clipper installed on the printer. And when they come out with the multi-material unit for this thing, it is going to give Bamboo Lab a run for their money, except the Creality K2 might uh, have something to say here as well. Unlike something with lockdown firmware, you can get into Clipper and you can add arc moves, you can write a custom macro, you can change the motor drivers, you can do anything. That's the point. And I love having that functionality and I really recommend having printers with that functionality. But again, I know not everybody needs or wants that. It's just something that I value in a printer. And there you have it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. In my opinion, this is a great printer, but it has a tricky problem that I really don't know how to solve. They seem to be on top of the solid state relay issue and they are sending out those replacements and I'll install it in mine and you guys should get some too if you already have the printer and I'm hoping new printers come with that pre-installed. And if you were thinking of buying this printer or any other Chidi product, I do have an affiliate link down in the description if you wanna use it to support the channel. That's all I've got for you guys today. And remember, it doesn't matter which printer you have, if you just subscribe, your prints will stay buttery smooth. I'll see you in the next one. You would have seen this rock wall face print. Rock face wall? Rock, rock wall face?